Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Comtech Advisory continue interviewing sponsors of uh, the market study on VPP market, we recently issued. By the way, the study is available for free download on CTRM Center webpage and EZT Center webpage. And today I talk with uh, Christoph Maltzer from Navitasoft, who is responsible for business development at the Center Innovation. Uh, first of all, Christoph, thank you again for sponsoring the study. And let's start with introduction. So please introduce yourself and your company, first of all. Yeah. So I'm personally based in Vienna. Navita Soft is in Budapest. I personally, I'm in the energy industry now for more than 15 years. I started initially as a consultant implementing e ETRM software and gradually moved into, into sales and the business development uh, with different uh, stages and uh, currently now with Navitasoft a bit more than one year. And Navitasoft in the business as well, a bit more than 15 years. Um, it all started with the market liberalization and Navitasoft does software for the energy market only and has now three different product lines. One is all about TSO, power and gas, so the market management system for Ukraine and Iago, for example, you, you, Ukraine and power TSO that's uh, made by us. So that's one product line. Yeah, the other one is um, an ETRM. And the third product line, it's all about flexibility. And that's the VPP platform we offer. That's uh, what we are talking right now about. Uh, thank you. So you are really one of the software companies offering uh, VPP platform. Uh, was that the reason why you decided to sponsor the report? What was your expectation uh, when making this decision? Yeah. So, well, the product line, we are um, the reason more or less for sponsoring uh, the report, of course, was the EMOT, was the VPP platform, the Energy Market of Things platform, as we call it. And um, the reason for sponsoring it, well, we were sure that Comtec delivers good quality and uh, we trust Comtec and, um, well, we got a good result. So the report itself is a, a very uh, high quality report um, stating um, more or less the basics of VPP, stating um, the different uh, providers and also um, stating very well the chances and the market potential in different countries. Mm -hmm. And how that report would help your business development? Did you learn something which you did not expect or you would use it for any other purpose? Yeah, well, it is a good source for um, decisions where to go next, more or less. What are the interesting markets? So we had our own mind about that and that was somehow supported by, by the results of that report as well. But overall, it's also a good uh, marketing document uh, on our end, uh, something to share um, to, to um, well, improve our credibility and our rapport, basically. Uh, we want to say a couple of words about what exactly you are supporting on the VPP uh, value chain. So what processes are supporting? Yeah. So basically from a, from a connection point of view, we connect to the assets. We are different interfaces. So MQTT, for example, and then all that, these kind of, of protocols to control the assets and to get the values from the assets. Um, on the other side, um, the market access, we offer the access to um, the ancillary services and to the wholesale market. And the processes within our um, basically, from day ahead, they had uh, market, they had trading, also they had uh, um, they had bids for ancillary services, and then intraday auction, down to the they had continuous, and further down the road to uh, controlling the assets to offer ancillary services, and also control the assets in a way that if there is uh, an asset which is not performing, then do the reoptimization and um, 
well, do our best to fulfill what was sold on the ancillary services market or the wholesale market. It's very broad functionality, uh, which you offer in that space. Uh, what are your future plans? How do you want to develop your product? Um, well, future plans are, of course, going into more markets uh, than we are currently are. So um, we see big potential in in the Baltics, for example, due to the Braille disconnect, so the disconnect from the Russian grid, which is about to happen on February 7th. So the Baltics will be then on island mode on the 8th of February and on the 9th, um, it will connect to um, the European market and uh, that uh, uh, a project which is supported from our side as well, because we are the selected provider for that BBCM project up there. And due to the disconnect from uh, from the Russian grid, the demand for uh, ancillary services will increase most likely. And um, growing renewables all over Europe, of course, uh, increase the need for some sort of flexibility tools and assets. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you estimate the market size of different European countries as was presented in the report? This was probably most difficult part to find the data and to, to make more or less reasonable numbers. I don't know how do you see it. Uh, yeah, I, I fully agree. So it is super hard to, to uh, figure out the market size and we have the same challenge because the market size isn't, it's just, um, I mean, it's only the num the, a number, but the barriers to, to enter these markets yeah. are a separate thing to, to evaluate. Absolutely. Uh, so that that's most <laughs> astonishing thing of the world. So you have largest market with most complex uh, yeah. ways to to enter that. Exactly, and and I mean we all know about the the, the biggest energy market in Europe, which is probably one of the hardest ones to exactly. To enter. That's what I mean. Yeah, not not naming the country here <laughs> deliberately. <laughs> Yeah, but there are other countries. So there are some where people are looking at very carefully at the moment where yeah. developments are quite quick. And so I think that market will grow. But we are uh, planning to update the market sizing regularly as new data would arrive, new regulations will be passed and, and so on. I think that Super. situation will be very dynamic, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anything you found unexpected in the report was surprising? Well, um, when you guys explained um, we, or highlighted what are the players out there, what are the software providers, there were some new names to me, um, which I have not heard before. That uh, that was very good and, and kind of a surprise. But um, what I've figured out recently also at, at one of the trade shows I've been, so um, these providers... I mean, there are so many out there. It's, I think, impossible to have a full list of all of them and, and the new ones are joining, I guess, on a daily base. Yeah, absolutely. And the people are very different with respect to what kind of software functionality they cover. So there's yeah. a lot of startups, uh, very local. I mean, first of all, the vendor market is local, which is not the same in trading software, for example. Yeah. And secondly, a lot of startups covering very small part of the value chain, that particular functionality. That's usually how you start yeah. the business. I think there's nothing surprising. Yeah, but and that was very that was very good as well in the report. The segmentation between the different uh, things um, some of the providers do um, that was that was or is very valuable as well. Okay, uh, well, thank you for uh, your sponsoring for this interview, and I hope on further cooperation. I hope so too. Thank you, Irina.